Knox County waterfront properties. What are they? Where are they? How much do they cost? How many days are they on market? What percentage of the market are they? We are talking all of that in this video. So if you're interested in buying water property, waterfront properties in Knox County, we're going to dive into the stats today so you can get an idea of what to expect, what pricing looks like, how competitive it is. So let's dive in and get started. All right, so as I said, we are only talking about Knox County waterfront properties. Now, why only Knox County? Because I wanted to give you an idea of what is available specifically in the county of Knoxville. That means we're only going to be addressing four specific bodies of water, okay? Tennessee River slash Fort Loudon, Melton Hill, French Broad, and the Holston, okay? Now, yes, there is Norris, there is Douglas, there is Teleco, there are other bodies of water. However, we are only discussing waterfront properties in Knox County. Check out other videos that are gonna discuss Knox County versus uh, Sevier County versus Anderson versus, right? So just know that this is only specifically about Knox County waterfront. The other thing I want to tell you is that these stats are based off of human entry, AKA when I go put a listing into the MLS, into the multiple listing service where all the agents list their properties, there are some buttons in there that you push. Waterfront access, lakefront, lakefront access. Okay, so I'm doing those three words. I didn't do water view, I didn't do lake view. I only did waterfront access, lakefront or lakefront access. I did not even do dock permit okay because there's multiple reasons if you want to know more about dock permits go check out my water my knox county water overview video buying and selling um and then also the faqs video but for this we're just talking specifically about things that are listed waterfront access lakefront access or lake front um and if you're like Haley, what is the difference that's a great question. Again, there's room for human error, but the thing is that it is standardized in the sense that for every water body of water, I just left those keywords. So I didn't toggle those. I didn't change those. So we're going off of those and we're taking a sample size from the larger picture. Okay. So that's a little bit about the data. The other thing is that you're going to notice that there are over the past year, so December, 2022 to December, 2023, which is why my nails look like this, which I feel like they're a little bit aggressive. So I just want to acknowledge this because I said I wanted red and then I looked down and this is what happened. This is what happens when you don't pay attention to what's going on because you're on your phone. Okay. Anyways, um, whatever. This makes this video very feel like Christmas, even though this is for all the times. This is an evergreen video. Okay. That being said, um, December 2022 to December 2023, 125 total properties listed as waterfront access, lakefront access, or lakefront in Knox County. We're going to break those down by body of water, but I just want to say that includes active, pending, and closed over the past year, 125. Now, if you want to know like, okay, well, what percentage of that is that of the total market that is too big of a data point what is happening here that is too big of a data point for me to pull like literally when i pull that much data the mls like is like ah, i can't compute so just to get an idea of when i say waterfront in knox county uh as of today when i'm making this video is december 11 2023 right now in knox county there are 953 active homes, active listings or home for sale, active single family homes for sale, 953. Of those, 25 are listed as waterfront access, lakefront access, or lakefront. So that is about 2.62% or just under 3% of total active listings waterfront. Why am I saying that? Well, because Knox County, it's not like this is, 50% of, I was like, what is that? It's my printer. I was like, someone dropped into the yard. Anyways, I don't know if you heard that, but waterfront properties account for about 3% of the active listings. 
Um, so I just want to say that as well, that this is not a huge portion, which is why I think it's even more important to know information about the different properties, where to look, what zip codes are they going to be, where's going to be the cheapest, where's going to be the most expensive, what's the most accessible. So that's the point of this video to kind of give you an idea. If you're thinking you want to be waterfront in Knox County, this is where you need to look. These are prices you need to consider. Um, and yeah, just to kind of give you some ideas about the stats, the data, how many days on market. Um, I also want to tell you that those 125, almost all, with the exception of about four, are on the four bodies of water I'm talking about. Why am I saying that? Well, because there's some rando properties, which there's nothing wrong with that. It sounds like I'm saying like it's bad. It's not bad. I'm just saying there's some random properties who have like a neighborhood lake. It's not a lake. Okay. It's a big pond. It's like too big to be called a pond and it's too small to be called a lake. So I'm choosing to call it a pond. Um, you can't put your pontoon boat in there. You can't go wakeboarding in there. You can't, you, no, you could paddleboard a 50 feet across and 50 feet back, which is totally fine. You do you. I'm just telling you, I did not include those. So when you like, you look at this overview map, you see these a couple like four dots and halls in Coryton. I did not include those. I only included these four bodies of water, okay? So now that we got the housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about where are the waterfront properties. So of the 125, 83 over the past year that are active, closed, or pending have been on the Tennessee River and Fort Loudoun Lake, which makes sense because that is the largest amount of water flowing through Knox County. The zip codes that you could find a waterfront property over the past year and where you can find Tennessee River, Fort Loudoun Lake property are 37919. So we're essentially gonna go from downtown west, okay? 37919, so think like Cherokee Boulevard, Sequoia Hills. If you're not familiar with Knoxville, if you go type in Cherokee Boulevard or Sequoia Hills, that's one of our um, most like high dollar, most luxury areas, um, especially within Knox City, but it is the most, to me, it's kind of like the Beverly Hills of Knox County, Knoxville, in my opinion. So 37919, if you keep going west, we hit 37922, which is North Shore, Concord. If we keep going west, we're gonna hit Farragut, 37934. So those three zip codes are all West Knox zip codes. They're all West Knox schools. Um, and those all have Tennessee River, Fort Loudoun, water frontage. Now the other zip codes are Louisville, which is 3777. It's four sevens. Okay. Um, and that is partly Knox, partly Blunt. And that's going to be just south of the river. Then you've got 37920, which is South Knoxville. So again, that's like, here's 379. If you look on a map and you go look at the Tennessee river and you zoom in and you find like uh Cherokee Boulevard, you're going to see this like loop right here in this loop directly opposite that is going to be South Knoxville property. So that also has Tennessee Riverfront, Fort Loudoun Lake, and then 37914 is a random, very small piece of this pie. Um, 83 listings, Tennessee River, Fort Loudoun, average close price, um, almost 1.3 million, $1.272 million is your average close over the past year. Current pending 1.6, so a bit higher than that closed Average active 2.2 million and average overall is a 1.56 million. So um, this is your most expensive water frontage uh, compared to the others um, close second to uh, Mountain Hill. So Tennessee River Fort Loudoun is where you're gonna pay most likely depending on the lot and the amount of acreage, how big the lot is, etc., how old the house is, you're gonna pay the most for Tennessee River Fort Loudoun lake water frontage. I do have an example when we get to Holston River, I can tell you now. Um, had a client looking at both um, 37919 water frontage versus uh, uh, Holston River water frontage, so north of town. And he was originally wanting like to drive his boat to be a part of the ball, maybe. Uh, or ball, oh my gosh, the ball army, okay. Um, uh, it is the ball navy, I'm, listen. I'm making this video without any caffeine, okay? Um, so essentially 37919, he looked one there and it was listed, let's say, I think like 1.9, 1.8, 1.9 million. The house was not in great shape. The lot 
was awesome. Awesome. It had a pool. It had a great boat dock situation, but the house itself had clearly some like foundation issues. Like it was going to need some major work versus. So that was a 1.8, 1.9 price versus we went up over to the Holston and stunning house. Um, six years old, gorgeous, beautiful, flat lot on an acre. I mean, stunning 1.3 big difference, right? So you're going to pay for the area. So I just want to point that out. Most expensive is going to be your Tennessee river, Fort Loudon Lake properties, and then specific to neighborhood specific to, if they're a one offer within a neighborhood, there's some, some different levers there, but your most expensive is going to be Tennessee river, Fort Loudon. So next up we have Melton Hill, and that is, um, kind of the line between Knox County and Oak Ridge, Knoxville to Oak Ridge. Melton Hill is most often associated with Hardin Valley, deep West, Hardin Valley, like West, West Knox. Um, and th these zip codes are going to be 37932, 37931, which is a Carnes zip code, and uh, 37803, which is technically, or sorry, 37830, which is technically an Oak Ridge zip code, but there's a little teeny pocket of 37830 that's just south of Mountain Hill rather than north because most of that would be Oak Ridge, just north of, but there's a tiny little pocket, 37830, where you have some Knox County water frontage. Now, this accounts for a lot less of the waterfront property, 11%. So Tennessee River uh, properties were about 66%, whereas Melton Hill are about 11%. Now pricing, this is on average close over the past year, 1.1 million. Uh, there's nothing currently pending at the time of making this video active average is 1.3. So three, seven, nine. So Tennessee river properties, current active average is 2.2 million. Melton Hill current active average is 1.3. So a $900,000 difference. I want to point that out to you. Um, overall closed average is at 1.2 million. Whereas overall closed average on the Tennessee river is 1.56. Now, here's something interesting. Tennessee River, Fort Loudon Lake water frontage, average days on market. So from listing to under contract, 28 days versus Mountain Hills, 21 days. So a week less on market. Um, and actually Mountain Hill properties of these four bodies of water is the shortest amount of time um, from list to contract, which I think is interesting. But I also think it speaks to West Knox is highly desirable. And there is less inventory of these types of properties. And so they're going to tend to move more quickly. Um, all right, so let's head east of downtown, talk about Holston River and the French Broad. So Holston River is north, French Broad is Holston, French Broad, and these flow into the Tennessee River. So they kind of come together at a Y. And you've got Holston, French Broad. So Holston River, um, of the 125 waterfront properties over the past year, 16 of these were on the Holston River and that accounts for about 13% of overall water frontage in Knox County uh, transacting from closed, active, pending. Um, average closed price, $561,000. Whereas Tennessee River, 1.27 million. Okay, so that is a big price difference. Um, average pending 925, average active 857,000, and average overall is 620,000. So this would be your best option for water frontage under a million dollars, period. If you want water frontage under a million dollars, you want to look, and you want it in Knox County, you want to look at water frontage on the Holston River. Now again, yes, properties do sell over a million dollars. However, this is going to again be your um, least expensive option. So what zip codes um, over the past year did this account for? Um, 37914, which is East Knox, and it's a huge zip code, but Part of that includes an area called Holston Hills. It is similar to Sequoia Hills in that 37919 area. It's just east of town. It's east of downtown. Uh, further out, it's not as accessible. It's not as close to all the things, right? Um, and then also 37871, which is Kodak, Strawberry Plains. There's some, um, check out the map where I show you what all zip codes that is. 
So in general though, your cheaper option is going to be uh, Holston River water frontage. Additionally, it not only is it cheaper, it also seems to sit on the market longer based on the other three options. So days to contract from list to being under contract, average days are 33. Tennessee River was 28 days, Melton Hill was 21 days, and French Broad is 27. So 33 days, this is your cheapest, and this seems to be your least competitive, which would be implied by the fact that it is the cheapest, because it was if it was the most competitive, it would move faster and it also would be higher price. The other thing that's interesting about Holston River water, waterfront properties is they tend to be older um, than like what you find in Farragut, uh, certainly what you probably find in Mountain Hill on, in Hardin Valley, just because Hardin Valley, I mean, is a relatively newer area. Now you do have some people that were like trailblazers, Knox County trailblazers who built their waterfront property 30 years ago on Mountain Hill, but that's not the average. And a lot of those properties have been completely gutted where some of the stuff you're seeing on Holston Hills is still like stepping back into the 1970s. So it's an interesting area to think about. Uh, there's some beautiful real estate in Holston Hills area and on the Holston River. Um, the other thing about the Holston River is it narrows back down. So it's not really a river that you're going to be able to take your boat from upstream Holston to downtown because it narrows out and shallows out pretty drastically. So that's just something else to think about if you're wanting, you know, to drive down to downtown, it may not be possible. But if you're looking at Mountain Hill, like you're not even gonna get on the Tennessee River. So side note to that. Now, finally, body of water number four is the French Broad River. And this would be uh, south of, here's the Holston, here's the French Broad. Again, they flow into the Tennessee River and French Broad is south of the Holston. And this accounts for South Knoxville, and South Knoxville. So all of this from French Broad to Tennessee River is all 37920. So 37920 covers a quite a bit of your water frontage, uh, waterfront properties that are available. Um, so just wanna say of these, um, of the 125 transactions having to do with waterfront property in Knox County, only four, only four were on the French Broad River which is like not very much average close price just above a million um nothing currently active nothing currently pending as of the time of this video um there's a lot of south knox water frontage is going to be tennessee river water frontage i just want to say that your average days on market from list to from list to um contract is 27. so in terms of quickest to contract to longest Quickest is Mountain Hill, then you've got French Broad, 27, you've got Tennessee River at 28 days, and you've got Holston River at 33. So um, French Broad, right in the middle, least possibility there. Um, it's the second cheapest to the Holston River, but you also have much less options um, of possibility. And I do just wanna also point out for you that um, of the South Knoxville properties, so of the, um, 83 that were on the Tennessee River, 36 of those Tennessee River properties were South Knox properties. So total out of all of this, um, I think 40 of the 125 are South Knox properties. So South Knox is another area to look at, but you're going to be looking at two bodies of water, French Broad and the Tennessee River. So, um, overall takeaways, you know, waterfront property, you're going to pay much more than the average market price. So right now in Knox County, current average sale price year to date, December 11th, 2023 is $406,000 versus uh, the average for closed waterfront property is right at a million. Okay, so two and a half ish times, two and a half times more for waterfront property than the average Knox County closed price. What about days on market? So currently right now, year to date, December 12th, no, December 11th, 2023, 56.5 days on market um, versus 27 and a quarter for waterfront property. So waterfront properties are more expensive, about two and a half times. And they also go under contract in about half as many days. So um, 
that's your quick and dirty overview of waterfront properties in the Knox County area. Um, go check out Douglas Waterfront. Check out Norris Waterfront. If you want specific videos comparing Knox County waterfront property to those two, please let me know in the comments because I would love for this information to be helpful for you. Um, maybe you're looking to purchase waterfront property or you just are, you like to know the data like I do, like a dork, then, um, you know, let me know. I would love to hear your feedback, your comments, your questions. And, you know, the takeaway is Knox County does have waterfront properties to offer. They are more expensive by two and a half times your current average price of the overall Knox County market. And they are moving at a faster pace in terms of um, list to under contract. So I hope this has been helpful. And um, I think that's all for now. As always, if you want more videos of content like this about the East Tennessee and Knoxville area and life in Tennessee in general, please subscribe because I would love to share so much more with you. I'm Haley Jones and I'll see you on the next video.